Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the marketing aspects that make Andrew so successful. And I think I went on kind of a rant on the last video about technology. And if you saw the things I know see in technology every day, data logic, Oracle data, the fact I know exactly what you're doing on every website you've ever visited, um, you would be uh, very afraid as well. So it's nice and refreshing to see a candidate actually tackle these issues that are complicated for many po um, politicians. Um, if you want to know how complicated, you can Google a video, you can YouTube a video right here called uh, Have Mark Zuckerberg Explain the Internet. And from Mark Zuckerberg's face, you will understand the frustration that I feel. So Andrew Yang has decided that the best way to win a election is to get a group of very, very fanatical individuals to get people who will donate one time, two times, three times. And that's what has happened here. Andrew has people who really believe in his cause. And that's a lot different from most businesses or most people in life. So I'll give you one good example. Uh, Houston Chronicle is a competitor of mine. Um, they they have opened a digital marketing agency called Amuse. And the reason I'm mentioning this name is very, so you can go look at their website, Facebook. I think they have 50,000, maybe 100,000 uh, likes on their Facebook, but there's no engagement. Maybe one or two people like every post that they make. And it's not because they're not consistent. It's not because they're not posting. Uh, they're doing a very good job of you know, trying to interact. And obviously, they have a digital marketing agency, a full-on digital marketing agency of a team of 25, 50 people. The question is, okay, why is the engagement level so low and why are people not interested in what the Houston Chronicle is posting, it comes down to your fan base. So if your fan base is declining, there's not really a way to stop it. It will continue to decline. Um, the other big part of you know, engagement level is you want to have engagement. So Andrew Yang will repost other people's stuff, which is something that the Houston Chronicle doesn't. The Houston Chronicle is all about me, 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 me. They never respond to comments. They never repost anyone else's stuff. They don't like anyone else's stuff. Um, and that's really weird for them to be like a community, you know, a, the biggest newspaper in Houston and not to engage back. So you lose a lot of people when... The people are, you know, really great supporters of you and they never see you like their posts or retweet it. There's no like engagement from the individual or business back to the customer or the, in this case, uh, the person supporting Andrew Yang. So Andrew has done a fantastic jo job with increasing his engagement, increasing his speaking. He takes every opportunity to speak, every opportunity to go on YouTube. Um, I'm sure a lot of those channels are too small for Elizabeth Warren. So if you look at the amount of YouTube videos Andrew Yang is in compared to Elizabeth Warren or Joe Biden, it's night or day and there you go. And Andrew will retweet um, on Twitter and on Facebook. He'll repost other people's. I remember seeing a repost of a Andrew Yang supporter who uh, built a piano into a waterfall, which I thought was very beautiful. And, you know, um, I don't have room for my backyard for a waterfall, but I thought it was great. And it's kind of a geeky, nerdy thing Andrew would retweet and make a comment on. That guy he retweeted is now a fan for life. And he's going to tell other people. And that's where you go with your engagement is there are two types of people on social media. And I know this because I run a company and we sell a bunch of social media. There's one type of person who wants all the likes and all the engagement and all the clout for themselves. I recently bumped into this type of person, this clout chaser 
on LinkedIn, and she was very mad at me, and for no reason, um, I reposted something from a joke book in 2003, and she found it very offensive to her because she found that like the analogy was not appropriate for uh, women. And she even mentions in her comment that out of a thousand people, which later became 8,000 who liked the post, she was, how can she be the only one who was offended? And uh, many people reposted it, including Gary V or Gary V. It was reposted on Gary V's private Facebook page. Uh, but she went out and attacked me and now she no longer works at that marketing agency up there in Vermont. When you deal with um, social media, you have to understand there will be haters. And that's the key to what Yang has been able to do. He can take the hate and convert it into something positive. And that's unique on social media. Uh, many times when you are all about me, 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 you do not share other people's tweets, you are trying to get as much clout as you can for yourself, not for your company. So in that engagement, it became very clear that she was doing this to promote herself. And oh, by the way, I've really hurt my company in the process. Of course, the company is eventually going to let go of that employee. So that's one type of person on social media. The other type is like, you know what? I like your post. You have 10 followers, but I'm going to retweet this out. And now you have 200. That's the type of person Andrew Yang is. And it makes sense, right? Share the wealth, right? So when you, he's preaching universal basic income, which is $1,000 for all people over 18, that's exactly what he's doing on social media. If he sees something, if you have 10 subscribers, or if you're Marcellus Wiley, I do watch him on uh, TV a lot. Um, he's pretty funny. I like the combination. I forget. Uh, Whitlock. Is uh, Jason Whitlock is a pretty pretty funny guy in my opinion, uh, but their interaction is really good together because they kind of are like, like peanut butter, butter and jelly. Uh, they go well together. He's not just tweeting and just uh, oh hey thank you so much big company for sponsoring me. It's his engagement. He has pictures of kids and you know working the phonophones, so he understands that the. His supporters appreciate that he goes to rallies, he rides a scooter, he has an anime pin, he has a math pin. They understand that he engages with them, which is different from Joe Biden or Elizabeth Warren or a big company. The engagement level of a big company like the Houston Chronicle is very small. So if they post something on their Facebook um, and you say, hey, awesome post, they're never going to respond to you. When you post something on Andrew Yang, either Andrew Yang himself or a supporter will respond and leave a comment. So then that gets you to be like, hey, you know, I'm part of this community. Uh, one of the main things on Twitch and on YouTube is the subscriber base, you know, subscribers. Um, when you subscribe to a Twitch channel, you feel part of the community. Yes, you pay money to feel that way, to get your special emojis. But the reason that works, the reason people are willing to pay money is they want to feel engagement. They want to feel like there's an interaction. Uh, I can tell you the Twitch channels that are most successful, they interact with their audience live. The channels like many of my, um, I have another channel, it's bigger than this channel, it's a Magic the Gathering channel. And... Uh, Magic Gathering, they pay $70,000 a year salary and base salary, and then they can win awards and stuff. They can win a lot of money, millions of dollars of uh, prizes a year, and they don't get any, these are the Magic players, they don't get any interaction because they won't engage with their audience. They spend four, eight hours signing and heaving and hauling, but they never even check the chat. So Magic the Gathering got rid of that program because they realized that, hey, we're paying these people $70,000 plus 100K in winnings a year, and there's no engagement. There's 100 people watching this chat because these are not entertaining. These are not people who care. 
Andrew Yang cares, it shows that he cares from his interaction with his audience, and that's how you do it. Um, there's no better way to grow bigger on social media and on whatever platform you want to pick than engaging with your audience in a real way. Like, it's you. It's me. That resonates with people. Um, so when you're a big company, maybe you have a lot of red tape. Maybe you have a lot of reasons that you don't want to engage with your user base. But eventually, you become what the Chronicle is now, a 50,000 likes, and you post something, and two people will accidentally like it, and no one else wants any part of that. That's our blanking newspaper. And if you want like a news story, that's like the best news story outlet, right? If you think about it, really think about it. How can a, the largest newspaper and the fourth largest city have so low engagement when their news things are just tailored towards engagement, right? Oh, so-and-so got shot or so-and-so's coming town, NBA All-Star Games coming down. These are very high-level engagement for a very big business. It doesn't make any sense, right? They should have thousands of likes, hundreds of thousands of you know, in engagement clicks and so on, but they don't have anything. It's because they don't care. You have to engage back. That's it. Um, so when I read your comments, I do read your comments about the whole anti-China, anti... It's just, if you're in my industry and you understand apps, we, we make apps, you know that the rules in China and Russia and India are, are different from in America. In America, you can make an app and like the ones that make in China or Russia, and you will be thrown in prison. Like, off to prison you go, because the privacy laws in each country are different. But the app developer in China can make his app collect data in a different way than the app. So if the app developer in America did some of the stuff that TikTok or um, the aging app in Russia does, they would be in jail now. But because the aging app is located in Russia, that's a company in Russia, hey, well, that's just how we do things in this country. So the privacy laws are different from country to country, which makes sense. But that does not mean a Russian app or a Chinese app cannot come to America and collect our data. It's up to Facebook. That's why Facebook and Google are in so much trouble now, because they're the barrier of entry, not the government. Because the U.S. government has no power over an app developer in Russia, China, or India. That's just fact. So I do read your comments. Anyway, bye guys.